everybody. This is the second half of our standard ACL conversation. Uh, the first half, we talked about it from a theory perspective. In this particular lesson, we are just going to go into the configuration. All right, so let's pop on over to GNS3 so that we can go through the configuration for our standard ACLs. Here I have a three router topology, a router in LA, Chicago, and New York. You can see my 1000 subnet is what's bridging my LA and Chicago subnets, and my 172.16.2 subnet between Chicago and New York. Now, essentially what I am planning on doing is creating a standard access list on my Chicago router, and I want to filter some of the traffic that's being sourced from LA destined for for my New York office. So I'm actually going to be applying it on the FA00 interface on ingress traffic or on inbound traffic. And part of the reason why I wanna do that is because if I am gonna be filtering traffic and dropping traffic, why bother have that Chicago router do any sort of routing lookup when we're just going to be dropping some of that traffic anyway? So first and foremost, I want to just kind of step through our configuration. We'll test between LA and New York, and then we'll go through and actually begin setting. Them. All right, so if I pop on over to my um, LA router here, I am just going to uh, ping my 172.16.2 one address that's the interface on my new york router and when i ping notice i do have a successful ping so next what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop on over to my chicago router so i have my f00 interface over here on the left and my g10 interface um, over on the right so if i do a show access list i can confirm that i don't have any acls currently provisioned now, what I wanna do is I wanna go into global configuration. Now, I can use the IP access list command, and when I utilize this command, I can specify whether I wanna do an extended or standard ACL. We're just starting with the basics, so we're gonna go with a standard, and then when I utilize that question mark, I can go in and say, hey, I wanna give it a number, such as one through 99 or 1300 through 1999, or I can also give it a name. Now, I don't have any ACLs provisioned yet, so why don't I just go ahead and use ACL number one. So once I hit enter, notice I'm dropped into an ACL configuration mode. So from here, this is where I can start provisioning my permit and deny statement. So let's say in this case, I want to start permitting maybe the 1001 subnet. So the 1001 subnet is my subnet um, that I have provisioned on my loopback. And uh, let's go ahead and use that slash 24 wildcard mask, and we can go ahead and hit enter. Now that we have an entry, if I do show IP access list, I can see I have that standard ACL numbered one, and I have one permit statement. This number 10 is just going to represent a sequence number. So what those sequence numbers can eventually be utilized for is, let's say I did add you know two or three additional permit or deny statements. Those would automatically be added as uh, number 20, number 30, and so on and so forth. And then if I ever wanted to insert a line item between 10 and 20, I could use sequence number 15 to insert a new uh, entry within my ACL. Now, if I don't specify a uh, um, <clears throat> sequence number, what I can do is I can just, let's say, permit uh, another subnet. Maybe I have a 10 0 two subnet that I'm eventually going to add. Um, so I can go ahead and add that into my um, access list. I can do show IP access list, and now I have two entries there. Now, don't forget with our ACLs, we do have an implicit deny at the end. So at the moment, if we were to apply this to an interface, we would essentially be uh, allowing these two subnets, but dropping everything out. So 
when we look at that 1000 subnet that's connecting LA to Chicago, all that traffic's gonna be dropped. And I do actually wanna demonstrate this for you because you can see how a lot of things will utilize these protocols, or, or excuse me, this subnet, because it's the subnet that is communicating with our other neighboring router. So any sort of other protocols that are being sent over that aren't necessarily going to be um, carried over. They're gonna be dropped because of that implicit deny. So let me exit out of here and let's go into the interface configuration mode. That's how we are going to apply this. So I'm gonna be applying it to my F00 interface and I'm actually gonna be utilizing the keyword IP access group instead of access list. So the IP access group applies the access list to an interface. So we need to reference which ACL it is. In our case, it was just ACL number one. And then we specify, hey, is it gonna be filtering on inbound or outbound traffic? So if it's from the direction of LA and we're going to the right, it's gonna be inbound into that router. So I'll just go ahead and put that keyword in. And what we can do is we can verify with a show run interface F00, and we can see that that access list has been applied. Now, what we're also gonna see is that pretty soon, EIGRP, one of our routing protocols, which is actually being sent over that 10000 subnet, is actually going to have some difficulties. So you can see here that our neighbor relationship um, via EIGRP has gone down. So because of that implicit deny for that particular subnet, no traffic is going to be carried over. So we have to really understand ACLs very, very well before we start um, deploying them in a uh, production environment. All right, so what we can do is we can uh, certainly go in and modify that. So we can go back in with our IP access list. It's our standard ACL number one. And then from here, I can go ahead and I can add a permit statement for the 10.0.0 subnet. And this is a slash 30. So that mass 255.255.255.252 needs to be converted into a wildcard mask, which looks like that. It's kind of funny when you first start seeing some of those other types of wildcard masks, but we wanna permit that. We'll eventually see our EIGRP neighbor adjacency come up. And then, there it is. <laughs> we can also um, do, or excuse me, I could show IP uh, access lists. And notice we can see all of those access lists. So uh, they've just automatically um, assigned them 10, 20, 30. And also one thing that you may, might not be familiar with is that if we were to add a more specific entry, let's say um, I wanna permit the 10, 10, 10, 10 IP address, that host address, because it's a more specific permit statement, it will automatically be put at the top of that ACL. So um, I hope this was an informative crash course on configuring those standard ACLs. Stay tuned for some of our other videos where we will go into the configuration of an extended ACL. Thanks so much, everybody.